What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Get the Bag podcast, episode 19. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of episodes. I know. <laughs> What's up, fam? What's going on? Uh, I'm your host, Gladia Castro. Got my co-host, Tim Park. Hey. Today's episode is going to be really, really great. Hopefully, you guys get a lot out of it. Um, but just a quick reminder, because this is a live show, please post your questions throughout our conversations in the chat. Don't forget to show some love, subscribe, like the channel. Um, you know, it does help with YouTube's algorithm. Um, but today's episode, how to get into multifamily investing. I, I Now that I've kind of learned a little bit, I, I do think this is one of the best real estate strategies out there. Mm -hmm. But um, I think anybody starting out, it can feel a little bit overwhelming when you compare a hundred plus unit building versus a single family, right? It can be like, oh man, um, I, you know, that's too much for me, but really when you lift the hood and look into like the details, the process is very similar. Uh, you're almost putting in the same amount of work mm -hmm. with, uh, more money at the end. So, um, you know, I, I, I do think, you know, we're still somewhat fresh, you know, maybe yeah. like a year in or so into mm -hmm. the multifamily game. Uh, but we'll go over some tips we've learned resources, uh, that have really helped us uh, navigate through the multifamily space and some recommendations for you. But um, yeah, Tim, I'm like super excited for this um, because this is something we've, we've specifically have been focusing on even these last couple months. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I loved it. I was looking forward to this episode just because we're knee deep in the process of multifamily right now. And right. Um, it's, it's been a process, but at the same time, it's been super fun just to dive in and experience and network and talk to brokers and, um, yeah. you know, submit offers. So it's, it's definitely a, a great play within your real estate strategy. And um, there's a lot of benefits with multifamily and we'll kind of dive in and discuss those benefits um, and, you know, um, resources, and then also some tips that we've learned along the way too. So, yeah. So my first question to you, Tim, is what kind of had you, um, why <clears throat> even get into multifamily? Like if, if I'm like, let's say I'm new into real estate and, um, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody who's not really aware and you see wholesaling, like, would you jump straight to multifamily or would you like learn the ropes a little bit and then get into it? Mm -hmm. Like, from your experience, like what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think my experience is that the first multifamily I kind of jumped in, it was, I actually just jumped in. I didn't really have an experience on that. I, I did some research, but the, <clears throat> I guess the main difference between residential and multifamily is understanding the numbers. Um, because when you're comping, like, a uh, you know, residential, it's about um, other houses that sold as, for as is properties in those areas. Mm -hmm. And then um, with multifamily, it's all about how much revenue is being made, what's the cash on cash return on for the investors, um, where you incorporate like cap rates and stuff. So there's some terminology in multifamily that you got, you need to understand and research and get a basic knowledge of so mm -hmm. you can uh, if you wholesale that deal you can talk um, the same language as the investor um, in right. that deal so um, there's some you know things that you will have to learn but the process is exactly the same in regards to wholesaling uh, multifamily and the reason I got into multifamily was more you know this if I was going to do the same amount of work but there was a, a bigger upside or bigger return, then um, that was kind of my thought process uh, of getting into multifamily. But yeah, there's more like benefits, like if you're able to um, invest yourself with other people's money in a multifamily, you can own a certain percentage of that. And then when you exit that multifamily, there's upside there. There's mm -hmm. upside on the revenue each month on, you know, rentals. So, right. and then the tax benefit as well for uh, multifamily. I love it. Yeah. And we'll, maybe we'll dissect like a, 
a deal we've like looked at mm-hmm. or kind of like what what things to look out for. But the same for me, it was like around the same time. I remember when we really started like connecting and um, mm-hmm. talking about like where our long term goals and uh, part of that was like commercial real estate and uh, getting into multifamily. Uh, and for those who don't know, there's different uh, forms of multifamily. So mm-hmm. uh, there's two to four units uh, is is considered, you know, multifamily. Two units, duplex. Three is triplex. Four is quad. Mm-hmm. Um, those could be when you're comping those, those can be almost comped similar to uh, a, a residential, a single family home. But once you get up to five units plus, that's considered commercial. So for those who, who don't know, um, th- there are some differences there. Um, but for me specifically, I, I knew I wanted to get into multifamily. It was just, I think I also had that intimidation, like, oh, wow, like, mm-hmm. you know, multifamily, that seems really complicated. And uh, I don't even know where to start. How do I market? But really, for those who are wholesaling, it's the same thing. We have an advantage in, in the people that I've connected with who do multifamily. Mm-hmm. They, their uh, marketing strategies are a little bit different. Like, we're very unique in wholesaling. Is like, we understand how to market to seller, mm-hmm. to the seller. Yeah. Uh, we have an advantage in that, in that, you know, we do different forms, whether it's cold calling, SMS, direct mail, um, you know, whereas maybe the typical multifamily um, uh, investors maybe do the go through brokers, mm-hmm. uh, go, do ma- mainly direct mail. Direct mail um, yeah. So they, those are a little bit more expensive. Well, the broker, you want to have connection, we'll, we'll break that down as well. But we have an advantage as wholesalers. If you can get a deal down with a uh, residential or single family home, you can do multifamily. You should mm-hmm. be able to uh, be able to market to sellers. But one thing that will really help is understand the terminology, like Tim said. Um, so there's a ton of resources out there that you can kind of even like you can even Google. Um, I think Investopedia, if you look in there and just type mm-hmm. in like multifamily um, they'll literally break down like what's a cap rate, uh, what's the NOI, right. what's uh, P and L's. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's so many other ones even that we're learning in terms of when you get a deal, like how do you know if it's a deal, like what kind of calculations, the expenses, that kind of stuff that uh, mm-hmm. goes into um, underwriting a multifamily deal. Um, but for me, I was like, if I'm putting in the same wor- amount of work and mm-hmm. getting like bigger paychecks like why not why not do that uh right. and immerse myself into that um but it really was a wholesaling experience that has helped me in like being more comfortable um mm-hmm. and confident and now like transitioning into multifamily. yeah i i think what i took away from wholesaling just residential was you know just diving in and doing the process and learning from that and then when I had an opportunity to, to dive into a multifamily, I kind of just, you know, made the phone call and uh, started talking to the broker and understanding what the, you know, owners or the sellers wanted to do. And, and um, you know, fortunately for me, I didn't, I had it in an experience like realtor that only focused on residential not multifamily so Mm. i was you know so that situation benefited me but also helped me learn like exactly when i needed to ask what what documents i needed to get from them um and these are all the same documents that the investor needed to have that was going to you know purchase the property uh, for me to wholesale it and right. um, so I, that's the biggest thing for me was just diving in um, and then learning as I, I went, even though if I might, the deal might not, not have gone through, I felt more confident doing my next deal and, um, you know, getting that locked up from there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's dissect that deal. Cause mm-hmm. um, that, I feel like, um, you know, knowing you at that time when mm-hmm. you were marketing that, that really was a, Um, pivotal moment, I would say, in your Mm -hmm. uh, real estate career, right, that turned things around and really opened your eyes into the potential. So break that down from start to finish. What uh, I know, I know it it turned didn't turn out how we how you expected, but you learned you took so much out of that. And um, maybe you can also talk about like what you learned or what you have done differently. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it was a eight unit apartment complex. And um, it's it was around my neighborhood. 
and I would walk past it all the time and I would see that like the roof was in, in, needed repair and you know the owners didn't take care of like the lawn it would you know, it would go several months without the lawn being cut and then um, I just could see mismanagement on it and mm -hmm. then as, as I was just looking and scrolling because I researched my neighborhood a lot um, because one of the things that I've learned is that, you know, you kind of eat in your backyard type of thing. So mm. um, I'm understanding, you know, what's happening in my neighborhood, like what houses are being sold, what, um, you know, what houses aren't being sold, what multifamilies are in the area, who's building in, in my neighborhood. So I kind of research that almost on a daily and get updates from, you know, newspapers or uh, Google alerts and, um, uh, but anyway, uh, as I was passing this, I came upon uh, a listing for it, and they was they were asking two point five for the property, and I was like, "There's no." And this way is this LA, is just just yeah, so everybody yeah. knows. Yeah, so this is West LA area near like Culver City, and um, so uh, that's like there's no way because a tear down house was worth one point five, and this is like totally. Uh, needed work. Um, there was tenants in it, of course. It was full of tenants. I think there was only one or two vacancies um, on the eight unit. So I just called the realtor and told her, you know, hey, I'm we're interested in this property. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? That's the exact same words. It wasn't like, hey, we're looking for properties in this area or whatever. I just told her, my company, this is what we're looking at. Um, can you tell me more about the property? And then that's when she went into the whole story about there's six guys or seven guys that were partnered up. They thought they could, you know, get a apartment complex, but they got busy with their lives. Um, mm -hmm. And nobody took the, hit, the, you know, lead to actually manage the property. Um, they were banking on it. They were making money from the property, but they weren't taking care of the property. And so they all kind of decided that they wanted to sell. And I asked her how they can come across 2.5. And she's like, well, they just ran their numbers and said that was a good number. I was like, well, that's way too high. Right. And um, after just doing like understanding the cap rate in the area, um, looking at other multifamilies that have sold um, with that particular cap rate and approximate uh, unit units, um, I came at a number at one point, a low number at 1.54. Um, so before you, you dig deeper, what's a, what's a cap mm -hmm. rate for those who, and how were you able to calculate that or how did you calculate that? Yeah. So the cap rate is basically the, um, it's an investor's like quick, uh, percentage on how they how much money they're going to make basically in that area right so mm -hmm. each area has a certain cap rate like um, more dense areas more populated areas have a lower cap rate but they have mm -hmm. higher rents so um, more, that, cash flow. more cash right and then um, like uh, more like Dallas or you know the Midwest has higher cap rates because it's uh, less dense and they have lower uh, rentals but the cost of uh, the cost of the actual multifamily is lower right so mm -hmm. they make more money in regards to that so you have to look at the different tiers and we can discuss that a little bit later um, but um, that's basically a, just a quick look uh, of that and how you calculate that is basically the price of what they're asking for divided by the um, uh, the actual NOI. So uh, revenue minus expenses is your net operating income. So that's mm -hmm. how much money you would make from that. Just the rough, basically a rough number right. of that. And then uh, that's how you get the cap rate. And then depending on what the cap rate is in that area, you can compare that if that person's um, accurate in regards to mm -hmm. what the return will be. Um, if not, then you can actually put in the actual cap rate for that area. And so you can, mm -hmm. you can definitely tell if, you know, the broker is on, on point on realistically on 
the cap rate in that area. If they're saying, you know, it's a six cap rate, they might be using uh, future rents um, after mm. renovation instead of actual rent numbers. So you had to be careful of that because you might say, oh, that's that might be a great opportunity because, um, you know, the cap rate is good, but you, you definitely have to look and dive, dive deeper into the numbers. Right. Um, yeah, Bam had a question. Do you have a tough number for uh, dollars per door in the area or an idea? I guess it does vary, right, on like the mm -hmm. class. Um, yeah, definitely it, the class. Yeah. And there's um, with multifamily, from what I've learned, there's different classes. So there's class A, which is, I think, really new builds like luxury, like where you know, either celebrities live or, um, you know, just really nice apartment complexes, mm -hmm. I think built within the last 10 years, 10 or 15 mm -hmm. years. And then you have your class B, Correct. Uh, which is still nicer, um, but built within the last 15, 20 or so. And then, you, then you, once you get into your C's and D's, that's like the hood or like get, you know, getting into like those really um, kind of sketch areas where that needs mm -hmm. a little bit of work. Um, maybe the, the landlord doesn't really take care of the property. So I think that varies per door, um, mm -hmm. and the, and the value of like what the multifamily is. Nah, we don't yeah. live in class A <laughs> or do you live in class A? Tim? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's a lot of B and C, uh, definitely around yeah. here there. I mean, there are class A's, um, that have been newly built, but uh, even the biggest, multifamily in right across the street from me it was I think built a year ago finished a year ago um, I'm already seeing like rust on the balcony railings and stuff oh, right wow. so so they didn't really kind of uh, kind of research what is you know good railings for for that area because I'm just seeing all kinds of rust so it's you know so there's like little things like that I you know notice now it's weird I would have never noticed that before just because right you know not not in you weren't aware of it not in one of them yeah yeah so it's funny yeah so let's let's continue the story so okay you you found okay. out the cap rate um so you went back to the realtor who you know this <laughs> wasn't really as experienced so you kind of use that to your advantage I'm assuming mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, because she didn't have any of the documentation. So some of the documentations that you would need um, to ask like a relative or the owner is their P&Ls, profit and loss statement, um, and then also their balance sheet. And then mm -hmm. what you also need to ask for is the rent rolls. Um, so you can see what the, the, you know, usually they call it the T12. So it's the running uh, monthly rents for the last 12 months, it's not mm -hmm. from a year ago, just from the last 12 months. So you can see who's actually paying and who's not um, uh, in the apartment complex, like if they're behind in payments, all of that. So right. all that information needs to be collected to put in the calculations that you would need to actually come out with a more accurate number at that time. Because those numbers will actually tell you how much you can really offer, how much money that you can can make uh, from mm -hmm. that. But I was able to negotiate with that with um, the realtor because I said 1.4. They came back at two. They came down to two million, and I said no. You know, we we can't go. So the most that we could probably go up to was based on the numbers was like 1.8, and then. Um, and that's what the tenants out, right? Mm. And then um, they said, um, okay, that's great. We agreed on that number because I figure I could dispo it at 2 million, right? And um, after that, we had an issue because they didn't want to get rid of the tenants at that point, right? Right. And then that's when I brought on Chris Jefferson um, on this Shout deal. Out Chris. Yeah, shout out to Chris. Um, and uh, we kind of talked about more about the deal and we got on the phone with with the owners and we kind of he kind of um, did his little magic and how he handles like sellers. And, you know, you know, he's just methodical on the phones. And it was a great learning experience of me for me to be on the phone with him uh, to ask these questions, but also see how he operates with 
uh, a bigger, you know, property, right? So mm. one of the takeaways is like, you know, usually when you have partners, you know, people can be good cop, bad cop type of thing. One can be a little bit more aggressive on the phones, to, you know, say if you, you know, so it sounds like you really want this deal, but um, if we're not at the number, I think, you know, we might not be the right buyers for you right. type of thing. So it's, um, it, it's more tag teaming. It, we, we do that in wholesaling anyway, right? Right, um, right. Uh, we we bring in someone that could maybe call for you and maybe get a no, lower number or whatever the case may be. So anyway, we did that on the phone. They agreed to actually um, to the number, um, and we told them that uh, they their main issue was um, they agreed to getting the tenants out, but then they backed out of that. Right, so they said they'll do a sixty day notice. Mm-hmm. And then my buyer at the time uh, said that would be okay if they had the 60 day notice. And then um, we came back with a, they said, no, you know, that's not going to be possible. Uh, we, we're not going to deal with the tenants. And I told them, I said, well, we'll have to come down on that price um, at one, 1. 1.8 to 1. 1.6. Right. Mm-hmm. And then there was, um, some issues on the back garage too. And I did, I had three general contractors come out and do bids for that. Mm-hmm. And that that's also what helped um, to lower the price at 1.6. And um, cause I gave them the, all the quotes from the uh, general contractors. And then they said, they, they agree that there's a lot of work that needs to be done plus renovations to each unit, all of that. And then um, we, when we, came down to it. They agreed to do the 60 day notice. I had the buyer all ready to go. Um, the next day they kind of, uh, called escrow and canceled the deal. Cause, um, mm. after talking to us, they, they, you know, they got scared and didn't want to miss with the tenants. And, and, and it's kind of tricky on where that right. property is because part of it is in LA County and part of it is in, um, uh, Culver City so like so there's two different in two different basically cities and and uh, and a county right where so, this property kind of fit I guess. correct correct and they had different um actual not laws but um procedures on how to uh, handle um uh, tenants during COVID Right. Mm, LA, right. Uh, LA city had theirs and then Culver city had theirs. So what happened was that they went to um, the city and told them that, you know, Hey, they're selling this property, but um, you know, they gave us a 60 day notice. So they started fighting that. Right. And that's when the owners got scared when the tenants started fighting that because they felt like they would have to fork up, a lot of money to actually get them out and they didn't have that money. And that, that was the, kind of the main reason that they were wanting to sell that property. Right. But, and they um, wanted to sell with the tenants in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so it, it was a, some takeaways was that, you know, I was new to the game, so I didn't have a lot of buyers at that time. Right someone that would actually I know that could buy it with the tenants and um, you know renovate as they went and then eventually raise the rents for the tenants Um, and then you know try to do it the long haul way right but but I didn't have it it was like my first deal I think I was just you know excited that I did have a buyer for it and um, someone that would take it vacant but you know that's what I've learned in this multifamily um, side of the business is that it's the relationships and building those relationships. So, you know, if you get a deal, you know who exactly you're going to go with um, on, on the buyer side. And then also mm-hmm. connecting with, uh, with the brokers and understanding where they're coming from and what listings they have, because they, they may have, a uh, creative financing deal where it's a 
you know, seller finance, and they do a lot of right. those deals within multifamily. And if the numbers fit, that's like you, you really only put a low number down and then the property is yours. And because you're paying, paying the, you know, the owner back, right. A certain, cer- certain monthly amount, but that's covered right. by the rents on the property as well too. So, right. Yeah. So it's, there's, a, I mean, there's so many cool things and creative things to do in multifamily, but um, those are the takeaways I guess I got from this deal was that, you know, one, it gave me the confidence to, to build more relationships and right. then um, don't be afraid to make the offers or negotiate. Right. So right. those are the main takeaways from that deal. I love that. Uh, Bam, I had another question, which can kind of end the story. Uh, have you reached back out since the rent moratoriums are mostly gone? <clears throat> yeah, they actually sold it at 1.4 million um, do you know and, like how how uh, far apart that was from the time that they they canceled escrow no I know, yeah i know they canceled and then um i think a couple months later they uh, but it just shows i was at point at 1.4 when i made my initial offer yeah so you're right? spot on yeah it was really spot on and that was like my first ever you know multifamily and just doing the minimal research that I that I knew just picking it up from different resources that we'll talk about a little bit later but Mm -hmm. um, just utilizing that knowledge to actually come up with a number and then researching what's um, the cap rates in the area that kind of really helped me identify what the actual offer a price would be and so, um, but now, I mean, I walked by there, they, they replaced the roof. They just painted everything. Um, they haven't tore down the back garage yet. Um, but it looks like that's kind of the next step, but there's tenants still there. Yeah. Do you so, know who bought it? Was it like an LLC or? Yeah, it, it was another company. So of course I put that them in my pocket too. Right. So, right. Yeah. That's another kind of way to reverse engineer is, um, you know, especially if you're kind of eyeing a property uh, and somebody else buys it, that's another buyer that you can put in your pocket. So that's a really good tip to, to do. Um, Galen has a question. Uh, where do you source multifamily leads and where do you market multifamily leads to buyers? So source, it's almost very similar mm-hmm. to how we do it. Um, so instead of picking uh, residential, you're, you're, uh, isolating it to multifamily properties. So you can do two mm-hmm. to four, but if you really want to scope out, you can do uh, five plus units. Um, mm-hmm. And it's the same way. Like you can cold call them. Now, um, one thing I've learned is you're, for the most part, unless it's a mom and pop landlord, um, you're dealing with people who are savvy investors, especially if they have a big portfolio. So if they have 20 plus um, you are uh, 20 plus properties, multifamily properties specifically. Um, so that's where it's like, uh, you can kind of use the same like script as you do for, um, any like wholesaling, mm-hmm. uh, marketing, but, uh, you just have to kind of know your terms because I would, I would assume savvy investors know when you're, when you're, uh, you know, full of it mm-hmm. or when you're capping, as they say, um, uh, just because <laughs> like, um, you know, if, if you don't sound confident, especially when you're learning these new terms or like, um, you know, what certain things mean. Um, but it's, it's really the same thing. Like you can do SMS now, uh, from what I found is typical, uh, like more traditional multifamily investors, they do direct mail more, Mm -hmm. uh, like in bulk, like they'll do like 10, they'll spend like 50 grand a month on direct mail. Um, or, um, that's really, I mean, for the most part, that's really what I hear. Or they they connect with brokers, mm-hmm. um, or they, they 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 inform us to like, yeah, you should network with brokers, which uh, we we totally agree as well. But we have an advantage in like we have we have the systems in place, and we can just copy that into multifamily. You like yeah. the only thing I would do is like just learn the terminology, of like what certain things mean, so that when you're asking for these documents, you sound like confident, like you know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. And be like, yeah, yeah, you know, we would just need the T12s, you know, the last, um, the balance sheet for the last two years, um, you know, whatever it, it whatever that is. Um, but it's, it's really the same. 
Um, mm-hmm. and then lead, and then for buyers, you're, you're doing the same thing as well. You're just filtering, or at least the kind of my prop stream hack is I just filter by cash buyers or buyers who are maybe, um, LLCs and mm-hmm. who, who bought a multifamily in the last couple years. Um, or, you know, um, a buyer who has over 50 properties. Like if I want to look for a hedge fund or maybe a, a cash buyer that has a ton of, um, properties, I'm just going to give them a call. Uh, and just be like, hey, you know, I'm another, uh, I'm an investor, um, and you know, I have a property here. I think you'd be interested in, uh, if you, if you want to do the wholesaling route. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, there's so many ways to uh, market, but I think us as wholesalers, we have an advantage um, that not many people follow. Um, yeah, you know, if they if they go like just straight multifamily. Yeah, and uh, that's a good point because a lot of people that have been in multifamily that's all they know. They've built a, a network of, you know, brokers that they can go to um, right. or brokers uh, approach them about deals um, and then direct mail to is, you know, and then now they're getting into more like cold calling and being more proactive on technology. Um, and uh, they're trying to learn that aspect. So for us coming into the game, we're coming up from the other side where we know the technology, we know the cold calling aspect. We have the systems um, already. The system, yeah, we have the systems already. So we're kind of at an advantage where some of the old uh, investors are trying to catch up to that part of it, right? Um, so I feel like our moment now is one of the best moments to get into multifamily just because of our experience in that. And because we can always network and build the relationships with brokers, that's not a problem for us. Or we can always send direct mailers or whatever, but we can utilize our technology to um, help us um, get quality leads from that. And what we've known and what we've been researching too is that the more, because, you know, one or two deals, especially in California, could set you for the whole year, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, <clears throat> and to get those one or two deals, you have to make a lot on offer, a lot of offers. And so um, it's definitely a situation where you do have to build relationships, but you also have to get a list and start calling that list and start. Um, so that's kind of why we've kind of, you know, teamed up and teamed up with a couple other people just to help, um, you know, try to get these deals and we're not trying to get two or three we're trying to get like maybe four or five right so Mm -hmm. um, because we can utilize our talents that way right and it's uh it's all about your pipeline like any like again like wholesale going back to wholesaling uh your pipeline is everything so Mm -hmm. um it's important to build that up and uh, make as many offers like tim said um and not being afraid to partner up i think again being part of chris's group um, he, he encourages that like partner up with you, with, with everyone. Um, so for us, it's, it made those, it, it made exact sense to partner up with, um, people that, you know, we feel like we have a really good connection with mm-hmm. and, um, you know, and, and I think it's important cause we always feel like we have to do it all. Um, mm-hmm. it's really, let's rely on each other. Let's make sure to have specific roles. Cause in the beginning it's like, well, what, what, how do we each contribute, um, what are we, and then I think it's focusing on what are we good at and then kind of like splitting up, like, all right, I'm going to be in charge of marketing. All right. I'm going to be in charge of um, mm-hmm. networking and finding buyers. Um, mm-hmm. all right. I'm going to be in charge of underwriting, like actually running the numbers. So it's really important to, um, have those specific roles because there are certain pieces in place, um, for a multifamily deal to, to come through. And I think for us, we definitely want to take down some multifamilies, but I think mm-hmm. to start off with, we want to at least wholesale some mm-hmm. to begin with, just to get our feet wet and really familiarize ourselves. But in, in reading a ton of books, um, you know, Michael Blanc is a great resource yeah. for um, multifamily. Another is like David Lindahl, I think is his name. Mm-hmm. He has this book mm-hmm. he wrote like back in 08. Yeah, that's still yeah. like I I started listening to it. I think it's called like multifamily millions. Mm-hmm. And literally what he's saying, and there's like a few things. He's he's not incorporating the internet really. Like the internet, but like oh, the strategies are just a little outdated almost. But mm-hmm. a lot of it is like fits in today's um, you know, this is like what over 10 years later, almost 14 years later. Um, but he talks about 
um, just making as much offers um, and also kind of understanding, um, you know, what, what it is that you need to do um, in the mm -hmm. multifamily space, like just, just learning, just take action and, and um, partnering up with specific people. But you can, in, when you close on a deal, you can also get money back as well. Mm -hmm. Like there's, yeah. so there, there's a, you don't necessarily have to wholesale it. You can also get uh, the way you configure the deal um, where maybe you use somebody else's money. You can get like, you know, if, if you dissect a million, if you buy a property for a million dollars, you can like dedicate some, um, some money for fixing up the property and also getting some money up front for actually putting together the deal. Like people mm -hmm. forget that. Um, and there's a difference between syndication where you're actually using um, like investors. Um, but mm -hmm. like if you're just getting money from, I don't know, um, either a lender or whatever, mm -hmm. you can kind of dissect the deal a little bit. Maybe we can like touch upon that because I don't think people understand. Imagine getting a wholesale, like almost like a wholesaling check, like a hunt of a hundred K or more, and then also taking down the property. Like that's yeah, still owning that's major. it. That's, that's, that's what I love about, you know, the multifamily because there's different ways to structure it. You know, it's more, uh, it's more on the commercial side. So there's not really kind of, um, it's kind of the wild, wild west. And, you know, it, even though like some of the marketing tech techniques are, you know, advancing on internet, but the multifamily and the numbers have been around for like years like yeah you know i mean i'm talking you know uh ever since they have had apartments they're using the same numbers because you know the rents are revenue coming in uh, the expenses are all the expenses that you pay out and then what's your total net um income from all of that once you mine it so the numbers are always going to be the numbers and we're just applying that to each a multifamily that is out there. So as you structure these deals, there's always ways for you to write in something that you can get paid up front when you're closing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a certain percentage of ownership, if you're, you know, using a lender or uh, a private investor as well, too, sometimes as well. So yeah, definitely. And I think um, imagine like being able to take down a property, but also have some cash up front just just mm -hmm. for for your works because you've you've earned it right you've you've put together the deal if it's a good deal uh and you do it right um that's it, it's worth it and i think that's where people get intimidated to like all the calculations and hey i am not good at math math is not my forte um so i think that's why it's also important to network and work with people uh not having you can do it yourself but like we always talk about that that's going to take you longer um mm -hmm. to figure out so if you can divvy it up and, um, you know, collaborate with other people in terms of like, well, how do I underwrite this? Like I have this property, they're interested, like, where do I even start, uh, in terms of that? So I think this is where also networking comes in where, uh, you know, a lot of the traditional, mm -hmm. uh, multifamily investors, they, they, uh, network with, with brokers, brokers, if you have the right broker can be your best friend, um, mm -hmm. because they're the ones sending you deals, um, you know, if, if you have that great connection, they'll sending you these deals right off the bat before they even put it on the MLS. So like pocket listings or even, mm -hmm. um, you know, but they have, they also have a pool of buyers, right? So if you're in mm -hmm. that pool of like favorites, you get dibs on, on the deal first. Um, right. so you, you do have to, um, once you network, you do have to be ready or have like a system set, um, mm -hmm. so that you can, um, make those offers quick. Cause if, if you don't get an offer in quick enough, somebody else is going to take it. So, um, yeah. maybe talk about Tim a little bit about the relationships with brokers and how key they are. Cause I think we talk about working with real estate agents in the wholesaling mm -hmm. game, which I think can, you know, many people have benefited from, mm -hmm. but like, how can we benefit the relationship with the broker in the multifamily space? Yeah. Um, I think this is, key because uh, you know a lot of seasoned investors already have like um, relationships with different brokers but as you are new to the game and you're talking to these brokers they're always looking for other investors or other um, people to come in so they can shoot it but for you to be serious with them you know you definitely come out and see a property with them have them talk more about their business have them you know um, share more about what you're trying to do 
Um, and it's okay, you know, to say, hey, you're, you're maybe, our company's new. Um, we're looking, right. we've been in residential, but now we're getting into multifamily, but we're really serious about putting in offers for um, really good deals. And um, that's why we want to build this relationship with you. And they're going to be, you know, they'll be willing to, you know, share deals with you. I may have a deal coming up. Um, you know, let me pass it to you um, mm -hmm. to see if you're interested. He's going to pass it to five other people. But just know that if he passes to you, at least put in an offer, right? Even though it might not be an offer that he might not take, but he just knows that you're serious or she may know that you're serious, right? So right. it's it's definitely a, um, a situation where you you're building that rapport. Always check up on uh, on the broker as well. See how build it. Building the rapport with the broker on like you know something you might have in common. You might talk about sports. You might talk about you know um, of course real estate, but I'll talk about outside of kids, whatever, whatever kind of bonds you guys together is something that you know you can definitely. Uh, leverage, um, take them out to lunch. If you, you have time, um, meet them for coffee, whatever the case may be, and talk about maybe deals that you're working on, not necessarily deals that they uh, may have, but maybe talk about deals that you, so they can get an understanding of how you do your business and, you know, let them know that you're closing deals outside of this multifamily. And then, you know, he might, they might have a, another situation where they bring you um, a yeah. house or, or, you know, so you just don't know where your next deal coming from. So I always say that, but, right. um, just build that relationship and that's how you really build it, you know? And, and, um, cause I recently, um, I've been using LinkedIn a lot, right? So mm -hmm. I've been reaching out to a lot of brokers that way. Um, just connecting with them. Um, a lot of them will hit me back because they'll see investor on my, uh, profile right. and um, they'll say hey do you have time to talk I would love to learn more about your business and then we do a brief 30 minute call or, or less and we talk about our business you know mind if I shoot you some deals you know great you know and if it's a really good uh, connection then we might meet try to meet up in the future or something like that or do a zoom call um, and you know build that relationship from there so um, that's that's kind of how I build that relationship. Um, yeah. And then, you know, continue to even support them, like go to a go to a multifamily, check it out and, you know, um, say, you know, do you have already offers on it? Because I know on one I went to I went to see the place and he goes, well, we already got, you know, five offers. We're going to take one of them. I said, mm -hmm. does it even make sense to make an offer on this? And he's like, well, it would have to be at this, right? And I said, I understand. I was like, well, we probably wouldn't be at that number. But um, but then he goes, well, since you're in, because this was more strictly a business, you know, like a commercial deal. Mm -hmm. But he owned, the owner owned the multi uh, multifamily next door. Oh, and he's you. like, as soon as this closes, he's going to sell that. So... I was like, well, if you can give me the numbers for that, and um, I would love to take it, um, you know, a first dibs on that when it comes sure. available. And he's like, yeah, he goes, as soon as we close, I'll send it to you. And then, you know, we can see if we can make a deal on it. I said, perfect. And that just yeah. all started from me visiting one of their properties. Yeah. And I think just uh, you touch upon that and like getting to know them, like with brokers, you're building rapport just like you are with a seller. So finding mm -hmm. something like whether it's sports, like you said, family, like just putting yourself out there because they're also gauging you. They're testing you out, too. Um, and if you're leading with value and like not considering what's uh, your needs first, something, you know, they're going to see they're going to see that. But if you're mm -hmm. just coming, go, coming to them, like, what do you have for me? And, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're going to notice that as well. So you have to just come in with value and, uh, just know, especially if they don't know you, they may test you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. They may send you the crappiest deals that they have and just mm -hmm. to see like, all right, well, like what, how are they going to handle yep. this? Yep. Um, so it's important, like you should still make an offer, but you can be like, this, this is not a deal for us. Um, mm -hmm. and so if they, they'll start respecting you, um, 
and and with, with with those sort of deals but like just know that they're they're going to test you um that's kind of one thing um i've learned as well as um you know in connecting with brokers or realtors who send me deals i'm like this just does not make sense um <laughs> and you you have to politely just be like no sorry and by saying no like you know you're earning their respect so um mm -hmm. i think that's really key in like um taking action um, mm -hmm. another way to, to market as well is working with the brokers, um, and, and, you know, just adding value. So I, I, I love that. Yeah. And, um, a little, there's, there's another way to kind of get into multifamily. If you like dive in and understand how to forecast, how to, um, put in the numbers, like people will like write you into the deal to just underwrite mm -hmm. it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you understand how to do the spreadsheet or and put on all the numbers and then actually forecast how much the investor is going to make in four to five years and you understand how to present that to them, they're going to be like, hey, can you underwrite this deal for me? And then they mm -hmm. write you a certain percentage uh, when it closes deal. because yeah. yeah, because you ran the numbers for them. And um, yeah, people don't know, think so about the, that. Yeah. For sure. Cause, uh, cause so many, uh, investors, they don't have time. Um, or maybe they don't have, a, they're big, but they're not so big where they have, a, like, if you're a legit, like, um, multifamily investing team, you have a team of underwriters, mm -hmm. um, who, who do the, run the numbers for you. Um, but a lot of times maybe, uh, people who maybe own 10 or so properties, mm -hmm. um, they need the help. So if you're able to uh, find an investor, and be like, hey, listen, uh, I'd love to network. Hey, is there anything I can do to help you out? Um, I'd be happy to uh, underwrite a deal for you. Um, that's adding, that's coming straight on through mm -hmm. uh, with value. Not even considering yep. um, like, hey, this is going to benefit me. Like maybe in the back of your head, you may know like, okay, mm -hmm. if I do help them out. But like, again, um, just just understand like where you can add value, where are your strengths? Like, are you, do you, are you a numbers person where you like crunching the stuff or are you more like on finding a good deal? Then maybe you can partner up with an investor. Um, like mm -hmm. you said, there's different ways you can split up the deal where you partner up maybe 50, 50 or like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 70, 30, whatever the case may be. Um, just come in with value. Do you have a buyer? Like, you know, like reach out to these investors and be like, Hey, you know, if you're ever looking to, um, partner up or whatever I have mm -hmm. these relationships. So there's so many ways you can um, partner up with, with uh, or add value to these investors. Right. Right. And that's, I, I, I guess that's most, the most important thing is that like how you're going to provide value for, especially when you're wholesaling um, with these investors, because if you do all the kind of legwork and get the, all the paperwork ready for them and then, you know, say, hey, this is a, a four cap rate. Um, we're looking at this price. Uh, we think it's too high. I think we can lock it up at this price. Um, you know, and you kind of do that all for them and say, you know, if you're interested, take a look. And mm -hmm. if you have all of that in place, they're going to be like, hey, we didn't really have to do much on this deal. Right. What other deals do you have we can work together on? Right. So you're making their job a little bit easier by providing them with all the uh, information that they would need to do the deal. Right. Exactly. Um, and just kind of going off, there's so many resources out there that like for, for underwriting and calculations, I think for a minute we're mm -hmm. like, okay, like we, we're starting to market to sellers. Mm -hmm. uh, sellers are coming back with price. Like how do we know if it's a good deal or not? It's not like something where you with multifamily again, uh, commercial multifamily five units or plus and up uh, you can't just comp it. Uh, compare mm -mm. it to a residential. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out what the, pr if the price is worth it, you underwrite it. Um, mm -hmm. So we found a really great calculation or calculator, uh, multifamily mm -hmm. calculator. Um, his uh, is Michael Blanks. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's B-L-A-N-K. Um, he has a great, I think it's like, I forgot how much it is. It's like a hundred bucks or something. Um, or maybe it was less. I can't, I can't recall what, what that was, but um he, ha he breaks it down. It comes with a course on how he breaks down the calculations. So that mm -hmm. has really helped us. Uh, and like his thing is like, you can make a, a, a deal in, uh, or you can come up with a deal in 10 minutes mm -hmm. just by plugging in. And so it's, this is why it's so important to get those, um, 
get those documents from the broker or if you're direct to seller, uh, which is even better, um, you can um, you need to ask for those those mm -hmm. numbers and sometimes mm -hmm. they do uh dealing with brokers they will stretch the numbers a little bit yeah so they you will you have to be cautious and and um double check that mm -hmm. um because sometimes the balance sheet won't match the t12s or the rent mm -hmm. rolls or like you know what i mean like something is off and so um that's that's something where you can approach the the broker or the seller like hey is uh, is it me or are the numbers off between this and that? Cause then, you know, mm -hmm. they're just trying to coast it and, and um, you know, mm -hmm. just try to slide in as, as much as they can. So um, having that education is really, really important. Um, you know, networking with other investors, attending conferences as mm -hmm. well. Um, we're attending a conference, Michael Blanc's conference, for mm -hmm. example, in Dallas uh, next month, since we're almost in, in, in May, which is crazy. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so we're going to that uh, to network to just put ourselves out there because, again, being in the real estate space, there's not many people who look like us, especially in multifamily is one thing yes. I've noticed as I follow more um investment groups uh who buy multifamily there's not many of us out there that we're, like we're out there but it's not that many mm -hmm. so we're you know we're about to show out out in dallas <laughs> uh, for sure but it's, it's just an opportunity to put a face to our names um and network like crazy whether it's like with brokers uh investors um and of course anything we learn like we're we're always like you know willing to share that with anyone so um I think like anything, like if you're in wholesaling or real estate, mm -hmm. just start listening to audiobooks, podcasts, they're all out mm -hmm. there, um, yeah. YouTube, uh, and just start taking action. You can take your wholesaling business and really turn that into multifamily as well. Like once you've kind you of can. built a, 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 a pretty good team, um, they can do the same thing with multifamily, um, just mm -hmm. copy and paste. Uh, the only thing is like underwriting for a deal may take a little bit longer um, mm -hmm. to understand because it's not, you're not just comping it, but it's really the same thing. You're, you're, yeah. you're dealing with the same, maybe title issues as a, a single family home. Uh, you're dealing with the same type of sellers or brokers. Um, so you're dealing with the same headaches <laughs> as a single yeah. family house, but you're uh, at the end game is like huge. You're able to mm -hmm. make triple or even more. Uh, I've, I've heard of people who've made a million dollar assignment fee, um, on top of like owning the property or if they do yeah. it, like imagine like, but usually it's not one person. It's usually mm -hmm. like a team, but like, imagine splitting exactly. up a team of four, a million dollars. Like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Like it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's the exciting part of, you know, multifamily and as you get into it, but, uh, my suggestion too, is just go on loop net and, you know, these, uh, commercial real estate websites to actually look for multifamilies in there. So they'll, they'll have different uh, industries like retail, um, you know, uh, like commercial buildings, but they also have multifamilies. But those sites are specifically for commercial use, mm -hmm. right? So they already know that they're going to put, like, they might list the you know, T12s or the balance sheet already on those websites. So you can download that, um, you know, uh, the operating memorandum and then uh, basically it would list everything on there. And then you just plug it into the calculator and then you can say, okay, I can make an offer of this, right? So just you can practice and then get used to the calculator mm -hmm. and then see because all the information is on the website. You know, sometimes you may have to call or whatever to get a little bit more accuracy on on it but it just gives you a general idea to get comfortable with the calculator and you know um get used to start making offers but there are sites out there that you can utilize that people are listing on the market for multifamily that they're selling out there so and you can just practice with that yeah absolutely it's all practice and execution <clears throat> um so don't don't get caught youtube university is great but don't get caught in like <laughs> watching a ton of stuff and getting overwhelmed and not taking action, do little baby steps, do what mm -hmm. you understand. We all know, like most of us who are in wholesaling, 
how to market, pull a multifamily list, like just keep it simple, right? Like um, pull a multifamily list um, and start marketing to it. I have a specific cadence. Uh, I do text messaging uh, and then I'll do like more niche, like uh, calling and then like whatever's left over, whoever I was unable to get in touch with, I send a direct mail to. So um, just whatever your cadence is, your sales cadence, like your marketing cycles, like just be consistent with that and you're going to land something and Mm -hmm. it's possible even like during your wholesaling, um, you may run into, a uh, an investor who wants to sell off his portfolio that does include a multifamily. Um, so you're going to run into it either way. So it's important to kind of understand the steps uh, that it takes, um, understanding all the documents that you need to actually like underwrite the deal then it's like actually underwriting it with the calculations Mm -hmm. um, and then putting out an offer. And that's that. And then the rest, of course, uh, finding funding. We didn't really touch upon that too much, Mm -hmm. but um, I think it does help unless it makes sense or maybe it's a seller finance deal. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it makes sense to wholesale so that you understand the process and maybe Mm -hmm. network with the buyer. Um, But once you kind of understand the process, you can take this, the, these properties down. Um, Mm -hmm. and uh, find the funding, whether it is uh, financing through a a, a typical lender. um, And uh, you can also house hack uh, Mm -hmm. a multifamily. That's a big one, yeah. uh, Two to four unit. Uh, You could um, finance or do a regular finance uh, with a commercial, but you would have to put down like I think 20% or so on average uh, down as a down payment. Um, Mm -hmm. And you can also find other investors. There's also syndication, which we didn't touch upon, where basically you open a pool of uh, investors to invest. So it can be anybody. Mm -hmm. It can be us uh, or people who have money, but they just don't know what to do with it. They want to invest. So they they put the money um, in your um, syndication and Mm -hmm. then they use that money to basically invest um, into, uh, into deals. Uh, the, right. more, the most simplest way I could explain it. Um, cause it can be a little overwhelming. So there's different ways to fund it. Um, mm-hmm. just as, as we talk about with real estate, just do one step at a time, just get as far out. And then once you get to a spot where you're like, okay, I have it locked up. What do I do next? Like just mm-hmm. figure it out. Right. Right. Um, right. You know, and go from there, get the necessary resources. So, um, yeah, definitely hope this helped, uh, you guys mm-hmm. at least kind of open your eyes into the possibilities with multifamily. It's not for everybody. Some people prefer just investing in like single family homes or, mm-hmm. uh, whatever the case may be. And that's totally fine. Um, you know, for us, we, we see the merit in investing in multifamily because yeah, we're, we're all about that cash flow and, and being able to <laughs> retire. Uh, and so mm-hmm. having a hundred plus units, uh, having several properties are a hundred plus units, you know, you do the math on the cash flow on that. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's our goal. We're aligned in terms of what, what we want with that. Of so, course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to yeah. leave the, the crew with Tim? Yeah. Um, you, Use us as a resource. I mean, if you have questions or if you you have you come across a deal, definitely hit us up. Um, I know the U yeah, family definitely. has all our information, but if you're listening or watching, you know, please uh, hit us up on our website or not website, but uh, uh, social media handles um, to where you know we'll we'll definitely answer the questions and kind of help you out and guide you in the right direction or you know we even might partner up on a deal yeah, with you exactly. so depending on how um how good of a deal it is and you know we we definitely want to bring value and be a resource for you so definitely yeah yeah definitely there uh yeah if you guys ever want to partner up or at least just learn um kind of be behind the scenes we'd be happy to help help you guys out um i I believe in the show notes we have our website or at least Mm -hmm. the the site to um me and tim's uh Mm -hmm. specific website where you can reach us i think we each have like if you ever want to set up one-on-one calls um with us um to dissect anything they're free um you know we're all about like adding value again um and we have our um you know all our contact information on, you can DM us on Instagram. Um, so really appreciate your guys' support. Hope you guys took a lot uh, from us, but yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions next week should be another really good one. We have uh, a guest coming on next week. 
tentatively. Uh, hopefully everything uh, checks out, but uh, we have awesome. our, our good friend Eric hopping on next week. Uh, who has been just doing amazing uh, mm -hmm. seven figure wholesaling business. So love you guys. Appreciate you guys tapping in. Don't forget to like subscribe, follow us on Instagram, get the yep. bag or is it get underscore the bag podcast, bag podcast. Yep. Uh, on Instagram. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. You have an amazing day. See y'all.